Hi everyone, welcome to this video tutorial on periodic sequences. Now the prerequisite knowledge required for this video is working with recurrence relations and using sigma notation. Now if you don't understand any of these topics, please do refer to the video links in the description below. So what exactly is a periodic sequence? Well the definition of a periodic sequence is a number sequence that has a repeating pattern. So here's one example, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and so on. As we can see, after the numbers 0 and 1, the sequence repeats itself again. 0, 1, 0, 1, and 0, 1. Now, we're often interested with something called the order or the period of a periodic sequence. And this is a value which tells you the number of terms in the sequence before the sequence repeats itself. Okay, so here we see that we have 0, 1, and then the sequence repeats itself. So we have two values before the sequence repeats itself, and therefore the order of this sequence is equal to 2. Let's have a look at another example. So here's an example of another periodic sequence, 5, 6, 7, 5, 6, 7, 5, 6, 7, and so on. In this sequence, we can see that there are three terms before the sequence repeats itself, and therefore the order is equal to three. Let's have a look at the next example. Minus four, minus eight, minus four, minus eight, minus four, minus eight, and so on. So here we can see that we have a periodic sequence with negative numbers, where the order in this case would be equal to two. In this sequence, we have one, zero, minus one, zero, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, then we can see a 1 and so on. Now this is also a periodic sequence that has a mix of positive and negative terms. And if we look closely at the terms, we can see that there are four numbers before the sequence repeats itself. 1, 0, minus 1, and 0, 1, 0, minus 1, and 0, and so on. And therefore, the order is equal to 4. Let's have a look at our last example. Here we have 7, 7, 7, and so on. Now this, as we know, is called a constant sequence, but it's also a periodic sequence because we can see that this is a number sequence which has a repeating pattern, and that repeating pattern is after one term, the term seven, and therefore the order is equal to one, okay? So a constant sequence will always be periodic and its order will always be equal to one. Now, looking at all of these sequences which we've set of periodic, one observation we can make is that every term always appears again inside the sequence. If we take this sequence, for example, we have five, five, five. We also have six, 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 and we got seven, seven, seven. So given our observation, let's formalize the definition of a periodic sequence. So a sequence is said to be periodic if there is an integer k such that the next term of the sequence u sub n is equal to u sub n plus k for all values of n belonging to the set of natural numbers where k is the order which we've just defined. Now, at first glance, this does seem to be quite a confusing definition, but once we understand it, we'll actually see that it's a very powerful way to describe a periodic sequence. Now, we should already know that u sub n represents every term in the sequence. And therefore, if k is an integer, then u sub n plus k must represent some other term further along in the sequence. So a way you could look at this definition is that every term in the sequence is equal to some other term further along in the sequence. And this definition actually spans across all of the terms in a periodic sequence. So let's have a look at an example. Let's go back to our sequence and take this sequence, for example. Let's mark the terms of this sequence as follows. So the first terms u sub one, u sub two, u sub three, and so on. Using this relationship, let's have a look at it when n is equal to one. So subbing the value of n is equal to one here, we get that u sub one is equal to u sub n plus k. Now n is equal to one and k, well, k is the order which we have already determined to be equal to three. And therefore, u sub n plus k 
would be equal to u sub 4. Now if we look at the terms in the sequence, we can actually see that u sub 1 and u sub 4 are both equal to 5. And therefore, this satisfies our definition. Let's have a look at when n is equal to 2. Subbing n equals to 2 and k equal to 3, we get that u sub 2 is equal to u sub 5. Now if we look at the sequence, we see that u sub 2 and u sub 5 are both equal to 6, which also satisfies the definition. Lastly, let's have a look when n is equal to 3. So subbing n equals to 3 into this relationship, we get that u sub 3 is equal to u sub 6. Checking our sequence, we get that u sub 3 and u sub 6 are both equal to 7. And if you keep on subbing more values of n into this relationship where k is equal to 3, you'll see that the terms you'll get will be 5, 6 or 7. And this shows that this definition is actually very powerful. Now let's have a look at some questions. Now a typical question is one where you'll either be given a recurrence relationship formula or the formula for the nth term of the sequence and you'll be asked to determine whether it's periodic or not and if it's periodic write down its order. So here we have the nth term of a sequence u sub n is equal to cosine of 90 times by n degrees and we need to find out whether it's periodic. So in order to do this, let's start to write out terms of this sequence. So u sub 1 substituting 1 into this formula, we get that u sub 1 is equal to cosine of 90 times 1, which is equal to 0. To get the next term, we need to sub 2 into the formula, giving us u sub 2 is equal to cosine of 90 times 2, which is equal to negative 1. The next term, u sub 3, is equal to 0. The next term, u sub 4, is equal to 1. So after writing down the first four terms, we can't quite see a pattern, but let's continue to write terms and see if we notice a pattern. So the next term, u sub 5, we get is equal to 0. u sub 6 is equal to negative 1. u sub 7 is equal to 0. And u sub 8 is equal to 1. So looking at these terms, we have 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1. So hopefully you can see that this is a periodic sequence and there are four terms before the sequence repeats itself again. And therefore, yes, this is a periodic sequence with order equal to four. Let's have a look at some trickier questions. The sequence with the recurrence relation u sub k plus one is equal to p times u sub k plus q, the first term being equal to 5, where p is a constant and q is equal to 10, is periodic with order 2. And we've been asked to find the value of p. So in this question, we've been given a recurrence relation. We're given the value of q inside this recurrence relation. And we're told that the sequence that this generates is periodic and has an order of 2. Now using this information, we need to find the value of p. So whenever we are looking at sequences, particularly recurrence relations, you're always advised to begin to write out terms. And in this case, we also need to use the information we're given in order to find the value of p. Given that the first term is equal to 5, we can find an expression for the next term, u sub 2, by subbing k is equal to 1 into this formula. That would give us u sub 1 plus 1, which is u sub 2, is equal to p times by u sub 1 plus q. And therefore, u sub 2 is equal to 5p plus 10. Okay, so we substitute u sub 1 into this formula, and we're given that that's 5. That's what gives us the 5 multiplied by p, and we get the 10 because q is equal to 10. In order to get the next term, u sub 3, we need to substitute k equal to 2 into this formula, and therefore u sub 3 is equal to p multiplied by u sub 2, which we've just found an expression for as 5p plus 10, plus q, which we know is equal to 10. 
Expanding the bracket, we get that this is equal to 5p squared plus 10p plus 10. So now we've written the first three terms of this periodic sequence. What do you think we can do in order to find the value of p? Well, we've been given that the order of this sequence is equal to 2. Now, if the order of a periodic sequence is equal to 2, it means that there are two values before the sequence repeats itself. And therefore, the first term, u sub 1, is equal to the third term, u sub 3. Now, we have u sub 1 and we have an expression for u sub 3. And therefore, we can set these equal and solve this equation to find the value of p. OK, so subtracting 5 from both sides, we get that 5p squared plus 10p plus 5 is equal to 0. And solving this quadratic equation, we get that p is equal to negative 1, which is the solution to this problem. Let's have a look at an exam question which involves using sigma notation with periodic sequences. Here's a question. A sequence of numbers, a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and so on, is defined by the recurrence relation a sub n plus 1 is equal to a sub n minus 3 over a sub n minus 2, where n belongs to the set of natural numbers. And the first term, a sub 1, is equal to 3. The first part of the question asks us to find the sum of terms of the sequence a sub r from r is equal to 1 up to 100. And this is a three mark question. So given the sequence a sub r, which is defined by this recurrence relation, we need to find the sum of terms from r equals to 1 up to 100. Now, this is an exam question where we've not been told anything about what kind of sequence this recurrence relation would generate. But as recommended earlier, we would always advise that you start writing out terms of any type of recurrence relation and trying to see whether you can determine the type of sequence it is. Okay, so let's start writing out terms. So given the fact that a sub 1 is equal to 3, well we get a sub 2 by subbing in n equals to 1 into this formula. And therefore a sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 which is equal to 3 minus 3 over 3 minus 2 and that is equal to 0. The next value, a sub 3, we get by subbing the previous term into this formula to get that a sub 3 is equal to 0 minus 3 over 0 minus 2, which is equal to 3 over 2. We get the next term by subbing this term into this formula to get that a sub 4 is equal to 3 over 2 minus 3 over 3 over 2 minus 2. You can work this out in your calculator and you would get that this is equal to 3. Now if we continue to use this recurrence relation to write more terms we would see that the sequence a sub bar gives us the following values 3 0 3 over 2, 3 0 3 over 2, 3 0 3 over 2 and so on. And this we can see is a periodic sequence with order 3. Now we need to calculate the sum of all of these terms indexed from r equals to 1 up to 100. And that's a lot of terms. Now, unlike the arithmetic or geometric sequence, there isn't a nice and easy formula that we can use to calculate the sum of the first 100 terms of a periodic sequence. So we have to be able to work this out by inspecting the values. A logical way we could approach this is that if we're looking at the first 100 terms of this sequence, how many times do you think you would see each term appear in the first 100 terms. Now since we're looking at 100 terms and there are three distinct terms which repeat itself within the first 100 terms, we can get this value by doing 100 divided by 3 which gives us 33.3 recurring. And what that means is that each of these terms will appear at least 33 times within the first 100 terms. And therefore, we can deduce that the sum of terms of this sequence a sub r from r equals 1 to 100 is equal to 3 multiplied by 33 plus 0, this term, multiplied by 33, plus 3 over 2 multiplied by 33. Now, this current calculation gives us the sum of the first 99 
terms. However, we need to add the last term, which is the hundredth term. Now, what do you think this hundredth term is going to be? Well, because three is the first term of this periodic sequence, it's always going to be the next term you find after the cycle repeats itself. And since we have an equal number of distinct terms in this current sum, it just means that the next term, which is the hundredth term, is going to be three. And so evaluating this, we get that this is equal to 99 plus zero, 33 times zero, plus 49.5, which is this multiple, plus the three, giving us a value of 151.5. The next part says, hence find the sum of terms of the sequence a sub r from r equals one to 100, plus the sum of terms of the same sequence a sub r from r is equal to one to 99. And this question is for one mark. Now we've already evaluated this sum. And remember earlier that we said that this calculation without the three would be the sum of the first 99 terms. So all we need to do to find the sum of this sum is to simply add these values which represents this sum to 151.5, which was our answer for the sum of the first 100 terms. And therefore we get the answer is equal to 151.5 plus 99 plus 49.5, which is equal to 300. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Keep up the good work and I'll see you soon. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.